Hi, welcome to a special Q&A recording of Penguin Bloom. It's one of the 50 official selection titles at the 45th Toronto International Film Festival. Pleased to say that this film plays as part of, part of our special presentations program, and which is probably, proudly sponsored by Visa. My name is Diana Sanchez. I am the Senior Director of Film here at TIFF. I'm, he I'm very thrilled to have uh, guests with us today from the film Penguin Bloom by Glendon Ivan. I'm gonna ask Glendon if you can introduce our guests that participated in your film uh, shortly. Um, I also want to remind all our audiences that this film is eligible for the People's Choice Award. So please vote for your favorite films at tiff.net forward slash vote. And also recognize this has been a really intense, different year. Um, COVID has affected us all and it's so great to be able to come together. Even if it's virtually, it's great to be able to come together and talk about films and talk about the films we love and Penguin Bloom is definitely one of them. So Glendon, if you can take it away and introduce us to everyone. Sure. Um, at the top there, we've got uh, Andrew Lincoln who plays Pam. Uh, next to Andrew, we've got Emma Cooper, who's one of our producers. And then in the next line, we've got Naomi Watts, who plays Sam Bloom. In the middle, we've got Bruna Papandrea, uh, one of our other producers. We've got Jackie Weaver, who plays, <coughs> excuse me, who plays Jan. And then we've got special guests, the real Sam and Cam Bloom. Uh, and we've got Rachel House, who plays a character called Gay, and I'm Glendon, director. Well, thanks and welcome, everyone. Um, I know this is your first time meeting since uh, shooting the film uh, a year ago, Glendon was telling me. And so it's really a wonderful honor for us to be able to, to be the meeting ground for, for this first screening of Penguin Bloom. Um, I, wanted to, I, I wanted to start, uh, Glendon, if you can just talk about how you got on board with this project. I know that uh, that there's a, uh, a book, Penguin Bloom, that Sam and, and Cameron Bloom wrote. And if you can talk about how you got involved with this project. Um, yeah, I was, it was one of those conversations that I was having with my agent a, a few years ago about what kind of films I was interested in making. Um, I'd been making a lot of dark drama for both film and television for many years. And um, it was a random comment. I said, you know, I'd really like to make a film that had an animal in it. And it was, it was, you know, it was just one of those little wish things that you put out there. And then probably six months or so later, she sent me the book Penguin Bloom. And she said, look, I know this is a bit left to feel for you, but like, would you be interested in this, in this, in this book? When I read the book and it really struck me, like it was just, it was unlike any book I'd seen before. It wasn't really... A photo book, and it wasn't an it wasn't a biography. It was sort of in between all these different, you know, kinds of books. But most importantly, um, I think that night after I read, I read it to my daughter, who was probably you know ten at the time, and she really enjoyed it, and I enjoyed it, and I thought, well, this could be a film. Like there's there's something in here that that, that I'm responding to, and my daughter's responding to, and and I then I did some research on the book and realised that it was something that everyone liked. And I just thought if I was going to do a film, I wanted it to be a film for everyone. And it had a, you know, had a, had a, a really great story um, and it was a different story and it had an animal at the, at, at the heart of it with um, Penguin, um, our magpie. So it was sort of a, a process from there on in. Yeah, after seeing the film, I, I did I suddenly want a magpie as a pen as well. I have to say you've done that. That was uh, amazing to me. Um, one of the questions I have also is about the point of view. We see a lot of the film from the point of view of, of, uh, of Noah. And I was wondering why, why you chose to do that. Um, yeah, it's a good question because, you know, it's a relatively simple story. Um, you know, the book, one of the beauties of the book is that it's very simple. And I think that's why it works, why it translates all around the world and why, you know, like young and old enjoy this book. So we had to find ways of, I guess, finding some complexity to the story or add layers to it. It's still, it's still that simple story. It still has this sort of almost fable-like quality to it. Um, but, you know, introducing Noah as one of, 
um, Sam and Cam's three children, sort of bringing him to the front, sort of gave us another point of view to the story, as he said, and and it gave us some drama. Like we could we could we sort of brought him into uh, not play off Sam in a way, but I guess see see that event through through a child's eyes, as well as through Sam's eyes. You know, in 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 the midst of like I guess in the the eye of the hurricane. So. I guess that that's that's the reason why, uh, and also like they had you know Sam and Cam have three amazing boys, uh, and it would have been great to sort of have them all in the throw. But you know it's there's a, there's a lot of boys. We, we always jokingly wish they only had one child because <laughs> it'd make the, the story a bit simpler. Um, uh, but yeah, Noah Noah just I don't know just sort of came to the forefront. We had to we had to choose one, and through picking up things through the book and also in, in talking to Sam and Cam about other parts of the story that aren't in the book, um, Noah came, you know, sort of bubbled to the surface. Yeah. And uh, Sam and Cameron, uh, what what uh, what made you comfortable about bringing your book to the screen? I'm sure that must have been, uh, it's, your, it's your life story that you as now are on screen how did you get to that decision and and how comfortable were you with that idea of having a movie i think it it, it kind of came uh, in a way kind of quickly it all happened like when we first started um when I, it all started really from me taking pictures of of you know the boys with penguin and and then everyone just fell in love with these pictures of this you know crazy little bird that was in our house all the time and no one really knew much about Sam's story. So when when the book came out, everyone really found out about the other side of, I guess, our story. And it wasn't just about a bird. It was about Sam going through her recovery and how how Penguin really helped Sam and us. So um, the book, when the book was published, it kind of just went um, quite quickly um, around the world. It was published in many other languages and stuff. So the film thing, it kind of came almost straight after that and it was really exciting because Naomi came on board early and um, Bruna and Emma. So it, um, it just, yeah, it happened really quickly and, and it, felt, it felt right because we knew um, people, well, we kind of associated ourselves with people that were going to do a beautiful, you know, project. And so, yeah, Bruno and Emma, if you can, I, I'll ask each of you to talk about uh, bringing this story to the screen. I'm sure it must have been um, challenging, working with magpies, working with children. What what motiv motivated you to take those steps? I'll start with Bruna. Oh, um, well, um, I remember where I was standing when Emma called me and said, you have to read this book, you have to read this book. And, and I was, uh, I was, we were making bigger lives and so I was looking at the ocean, which I thought was very apt in this story. And I was like, no, 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 I'm too busy. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. And then I actually can put together this beautiful uh, trailer for the book. And that's all I had to watch actually, even yeah. before reading the book, I read, I watched that two minutes and I immediately saw, I, I feel very emotional even speaking about it, um, saw into this family and, and, you know, and like everything that we try and approach, it's like, have you ever seen this before? And I haven't. And so uh, Naomi and Emma, who both called me, who are lifelong friends of mine, and we'd all tried to work together for years, it was, it was meant, it was absolutely meant to be. And so I felt incredibly compelled in that moment to kind of jump on board. And, and it, I think it was pretty smooth sailing from then, Emma. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I heard about the story first through um, Bradley Trevor Grieve, the author of the book. And, um, and you know, when he was, when he was, and, and I think like Cam said, I, um, like a lot of people didn't know Sam's story. And I think, you know, listening to that story, it's that real sort of punch in the guts. And then, but then you have this incredible um, story, which is really the heart of it about, you know, the connection between um, the human spirit and this, and this, and the wild really and nature. Um, and to be, you know, involved in a film with with a with an animal also at the, as a as a as a lead, I thought was something really fascinating and um, something that we hadn't really seen before. So, um, you know, I was very keen to get on board. And even though you shouldn't really work a lot with animals, it was, um, you know, it was something that was going to be really challenging, but um, you know, an, an incredible story to bring to the screen. Yeah, it's it's really really powerful, and that it speaks also to resilience, which I really love about it, which I think is especially resonant through what we're living now. So 
I really appreciate that. Um, I want to talk um, a little bit about uh, Naomi and Andrew. If you can talk about, did you did you work with Sam and Cameron to to work out your roles? And Naomi, that must have been physically such a challenging role. If, if Naomi, you can start telling us a little bit about that. Um, yes. Um, firstly, I just want to also add to um, that remembering that moment, like Bruno said, I, I remember exactly where I was when I got the book. And um, I was, it was a Sunday morning and I pulled it out of the envelope that Emma had sent it to me in and had the kids in the bed at the time. And I just, be, I just remember them being really compelled by these images of Cam's um, and me being really compelled with the story. Um, and it is about, you know, Sam's broken body and this family coming undone. Um, but yet I was experiencing my family come together as we brought, you know, as we absorbed this story. And that was always um, what struck me as something quite beautiful is how, um, how important it is to, to sort of acknowledge that it's, it, a family is everything. And, and this was how she was going to survive is by, you know, bringing the family together through this wonderful little bird that just suddenly appears and there's so much um, poetry in that that just moved me and my family um, and uh, here we are but yeah to go to the, the second question was Sam um, and I um, met several times well over the span of a couple of years I feel maybe maybe it was a year and, and change um, and then and suddenly it was all happening um, and we had lots of conversations. Sam was incredibly generous with her time and, you know, things that she wrote um, during the process of healing, which obviously were quite personal, um, but absolutely vital for, for, for an actor to put that together and make sure that you're, you know, telling the truest version of her story. Um, so it was it was wonderful to work so closely with Sam. I really, really appreciated that. Yeah, and um, I, ca I came to this, I I owned the book. Uh, I didn't, I, I'd forgotten that I owned the book and I started reading the script and, and about three pages in, I shouted to my wife and I said, do you remember a book about a, a magpie? This extraordinary, useful book. And she went, yeah, it's upstairs. So I ran up. Um, and then got halfway through the script and started crying uh, and finished the script and just thought it was the most beautiful story of hope uh, with humor uh, and just, and I, and I, then I relayed the story to my wife and cried again. And that's when I called my agent. I just said I had to be part of this thing. It didn't matter. It was just such a beautiful thing to put into the world, I think. And, um, and then, of course, uh, within a sort of week or so, I was surfing with Cam. He was desperately trying to put me on the biggest waves in Australia. Um, and, and I think I think he realised very quickly that he got a pommy uh, playing him who wasn't as adept as he could have been on a surfboard. Um, but fortunately, we cut all of those scenes, didn't we, Glendon? But... Um, uh, the key thing that I remember, um, because obviously when we started work, I was interested in, you know, a relationship that, that suddenly in, overnight instantly changes into a principal carer and someone being cared for. And, and I love the in sickness and in health sort of love story that we're telling. And um, so I was really, really... And I think everybody was very keen to make sure that we got the physical relationship absolutely right of the carer um, and the intimacy of, and the problems within that, that no one can leave a scene. They're, they're sort of forced together. And that I found that intriguing. That was yeah, very beautiful, the how the relationship is portray portrayed and, and all that. Uh, I just it's there's a lot of generosity in the film that I think comes through, and I think Rachel, your your character, uh, definitely speaks to that. Can you tell us a bit about your work on the film? 
Oh, well, I, I mean, I just want to say that, you know, that was the environment. Um, it was such a generous, you know, set to walk on to, um, particularly having Sam and Cam around. They were there on the first day and um, it, it was a, it was a, it, it was a lovely family feeling. Naomi had all her family there um, and gay, the real, real gay was there as well and, you know, and all the kids and their parents. So so I feel like that spirit just spilled out, you know, everywhere. Um, yeah, but I think we were all really aware of how privileged we were to be telling the story and how, you know, generous um, Sam and Cam were to allow us to tell that, yeah. Thank you. Sorry, what um, was the question? No, I wanted to talk about my, I think um, talking about the generosity in your character, oh, like yeah. has too much oh, yeah. generosity in the film. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean Gay Gay is a wonderful human being, as the as the blooms will attest. Yeah. She she was great. She was great to have around and and very much um that character. Very much so. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Jackie. Um, I loved seeing your character as the mother. Uh, there was moments that I think a lot of people, uh, that mother-daughter relationships are very well portrayed. Uh, I just wanted to know how you built the character. Um, if you can just talk a little bit about that. Well, Jan doesn't get much said about her in the book. So um, until I met the Blooms and I was flying blind a bit, and I did meet Jan, and she was lovely. Um, but I've I've had a mother. I haven't had a daughter, but I know that things can get touchy at times between all mothers and daughters. So it wasn't difficult to imagine. Um, but my my main um, motivation in doing a film is to work with Naomi because I've just loved to work forever and ever. I, she's a real chameleon, and I love what she does. And Emma's been a friend of mine for a long time and she sent me the book and I, like everyone else, I cried and said, I want to do this, so. Yeah. I cried quite a bit during the film. It was uh, very, very, very moving. I'm looking forward to, to reading the book as well. It's been just so lovely to speak with you all. I was uh, hoping, Glendon, if you could have a, just a few words to our audiences about Anything you want to leave them with? Now they're seeing your film. They've seen your film. They're, they're coming to listen to us chat a bit. If there's some final thoughts you'd like to share. Ooh. I mean, it was, it's very interesting having finished this film during a pandemic. Um, I, f I feel, and we've, we've talked about this as a group, that there's some sort of, it's not purpose, not, we didn't do this on purpose, but it feels like it's almost like a metaphor for what the world's going through at the moment. Um, well, I always thought that what happens to Sam Bloom in the story is, is that, you know, she's she's having a, a, a great life, it's a regular life, and then all of a sudden everything changes. Uh, and I thought that was quite a unique experience, although that could happen to anyone. But I feel like in a, in a way, and this is not to take away from Sam's story at all, I feel like we're all experiencing that at the moment. We've all experienced our regular lives going along and then all of a sudden everything changes. Um, and, you know, like Sam, we've isolated, we've shut the world off, we've had to, you know, distance ourselves from friends and family. Um, but, you know, like Sam, was, we're going to come out the other side um, and I think we'll come out like Sam, like the same person but, but different. I think you know we will be the same people, but we've but we've learnt a lot about ourselves and and the world around us, and we will be different. So it sort of feels I don't know. I was, feel like it's I'm not saying it's the perfect film for the time, but it, it feels like a a film that is has has come out of this situation that we're in and sort of a changed and adapted and become this I don't know like a metaphor, I guess. So I hope you enjoyed it. Well, thank you so much to all of you for joining us here at, at Virtual TIFF. Um, really looking forward to being able to do this in person again one day. And um, 
just Sam and Cameron, it's, thanks for sharing your story with this world in so many ways. It's really, really a, a privilege and it's an honor to be able to share your story with TIFF audiences as well. Thank you. But we want to thank you guys. I mean, we're so lucky. Everyone was so lovely and compassionate. So, yeah, and we felt part of the team, which was awesome. So, yeah, thanks. Thank you all.